each of you boys and girls. Guess what? Your day is getting better. And you know why? Because you chose to spend the next 20 minutes getting to know how God wants to bring you joy from His Word, the Bible. You will have an awesome time singing songs, talking to God, watching the cartoon story, and hearing directly what Jesus has to say to you. Welcome! It's Kids Church, and it's just for you. The fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. Fruit of the Spirit's not a coconut. If you want to be a coconut, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. The fruit of the Spirit's not a banana. You want to be a banana? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a watermelon. You want to be a watermelon? You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. The fruit of the Spirit's not a lemon. If you want to be a lemon, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Oh, the fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. The fruit of the Spirit's not a cherry. If you want to be a cherry, you might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the Spirit, because the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Okay, everybody knows that grapes come in bunches, so everybody get in big bunches. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the Spirit's not a grape. You want to be a grape. You might as well hear it. You can't be a fruit of the spirit, cause the fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. The fruit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace. I will be reading John 14, 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. Will you bow your head and pray with me? Dear Lord, thank you for waking me up this morning and providing, and providing food for me. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for my sins. Please keep us safe from harm and bless us with your presence. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. The Story of Christmas, Mary and Joseph. This is Mary. Hi! You see, Mary was the mother of Jesus, but before that happened, she lived in the town of Nazareth. Mary had no children because she lived according to God's law <laughs> and had never been married. Oops. But she was engaged to marry a man named Joseph. Hey, -o. Hi, Joseph! One day, an angel came to Mary and said, Hi. Ah. That God had chosen Mary. The angel said, God is with you. But Mary was afraid and confused. She wondered what the angel was talking about. Then the angel said, Don't be afraid. God loves you and wants to use you in a great way. Uh, me? You will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and he will be the king forever. Uh, hold on. Mary asked, 
but how can this happen? For she was not married yet and knew that she couldn't have a child until she was married. But the angel told Mary that the Holy Spirit would make her pregnant. Wow! So that the baby born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. Wow! The angel reminded her that nothing is impossible with God. Eh, okay, let's do this! So Mary decided to trust God and all that he had planned for her. Before their wedding, Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant. Wait, what? He thought she had done something wrong. Uh. But Joseph was a man of God and decided to break off the engagement quietly so no one around town would think badly of Mary. While Joseph was thinking about all this, an angel appeared to him in a dream. Oh. Uh, hi? The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Huh, why? The angel explained that Mary's baby was from God. Wait, what? The angel told Joseph that the baby's name would be Jesus, and he would save his people from their sins. Oh, wow. And when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel told him. Uh, hi. You ready? Really? and took Mary as his wife, while she was still pregnant with the Son of God. And so Joseph and Mary trusted in God, and the two followed the plan that God had given them to help bring the Savior into the world. Hey friends, did you like that video? Yeah, I thought you would. Hey, why don't you check out some other ones right there? Good stuff, it's all good stuff. Hey Carl, you want a snack? Yeah, I knew you would, buddy. Hey guys, welcome back for another week of Kids Church. I'm Pastor Nate, and we're gonna continue today in our series about the coming of Christ. It is that 
Christmas season and as fun as presents and Santa and all the toys and games are, it's really all about the coming of Jesus into the world. So let's this morning look at the, the words of God given through the prophet Micah. We're going to be in Micah chapter 5 and we're going to read verse 3 and 4 together. But you, Bethlehem Ephrath, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over all Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. That's Micah chapter 5, verse 3 and 4. And as we talked about last week with the word from Isaiah, we know that God has spoken to us throughout history through the use of prophets. Those are men that God divinely inspires and gives a message to to tell the rest of us. And here God speaks through Micah. He says that there's going to be one who is coming. He's going to come out of Bethlehem. And it says that though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one for me who will be ruler over all of Israel. Now this is an important concept because in the ways of, of the human mind, we think bigger is better, newer is better. It, it, it is unexpected for us to see such a great thing come from such a small place. But that's what we see with the coming of Jesus. When God entered the world, though he is the greatest beyond the great, he came in in a little town called Bethlehem. And that is the site of, of, of the clan of Judah. It wasn't even through the nation of Israel proper. It was through the nation of Judah. You might have heard Jesus called the Lion of Judah. So the, the text begins by telling us that Jesus will come to the world through the clan of Judah in the town of Bethlehem. And it says his origins are from old and ancient times. Well, what does that mean? How can a baby that is born be old and of ancient times. Well, let's talk to our friend John for a second in the first chapter. John tells us that he was always there. Jesus always existed. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was God, and the Word was with God. Nothing that was made, th with, was made without Him, and everything that was made was made through Him. So Jesus, though He was born in an earthly sense, as a baby in a manger in Bethlehem, existed since the beginning of creation and before the, the beginning of creation. He has always existed. Verse 3 says, Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor bears a son. Now we know that throughout history, Israel had been conquered by Assyrians and Babylonians and, and finally Romans took over. It had been abandoned. The temple had been destroyed at this point and rebuilt. The people were scattered and taken into captivity by the Babylonians. And we see that the prophet is saying that until the one who is in labor bears a son, Israel will be abandoned. And that one who in labor we know is Mother Mary, Jesus' mother, the virgin, who would carry Jesus and give birth to him. It says in verse 4, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord. You ever heard that Jesus has been called the Good Shepherd? He is the shepherd, and the analogy of shepherd to flock is important to the people of Israel because they were sheep herders. They didn't have a, a great consumer society or production society like we have today where you can just go to Walmart and buy whatever you want and things are made in manufacturing plants and large farms that sprawl all across the Midwest. These were sheep herders. They had small pastures. It was important for Jesus to be seen as a shepherd by a people who were shepherds. And it says he will tend his flock, that's us, the people of Israel, and those of us who have faith in him, in the strength of the Lord. Jesus cannot be overcome. Even though a, a, an earthly shepherd could be overwhelmed by highwaymen or packs of animals, the good shepherd shepherds us in the strength of the Lord. It says he does it in the majesty of of the name of the Lord his God. If you think about all the things that Jesus did in the Bible, when it talks about restoring sight and, 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 and bringing folk back to life, 
Even like when Lazarus died and Jesus raised him again and Mary and Martha are freaking out. If you would have just got here sooner, my brother wouldn't have died. He says, but these things had to happen so that God would get the glory. He rules in the majesty in the name of the Lord of his God, our God. It says, and then they will live securely for then his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. And we can live securely. Because we know that if we believed in Jesus, that he was God, the Son of God, that he is seated at the right hand of God, that one day he will come back again for us, those who believe in him, that things that happen here don't really matter. We have blessed assurance. We are secure in our knowledge that we will spend eternity with God because we trust in his Son. And it says his greatness will reach the ends of the earth. And boy, hasn't it. There are Christians and believers in in Jesus from every corner, from America to China to Mexico to Argentina to Northern Europe, everywhere. There is no place on this earth that has not been touched by the gospel of Jesus. His greatness has truly reached the ends of the earth. And the Bible says that one day a time is going to come when every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that He is Lord. Now that's how greatness reaches the ends of the earth. And I just want to make sure that it's reached you. Again, this is the season, not for presents and Santa Claus and Rudolph and Frosty. I love and grew up with all of those characters. But the one person that this season is truly about is Jesus. He came to save you. We're all sinners. I've sinned, you've sinned, mama's sinned, grandpa's sinned. We've all sinned. We've fallen short of the glory of God. But it also says in the word that the free gift of God is eternal life. And that free gift comes only at the cost of faith and belief in Jesus Christ. We just have to repent from our sins, declare that He is Lord, and trust Him to lead us and guide us. And if you do that, you will be saved. So if you need to have that introduction to Jesus, just type down below, In the comments, one of us will reach back out to you. Call the church anytime, 451-8800, or you can join us for Children's Church live and in person at Mount Moriah every Sunday at 1030 a.m. We would love to see you. We play games, we, we have Bible lessons, we have snacks, we have a great time in the Lord, and we'd love to see you here. Well, that's it for today. Let's just close in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for these that have watched. God, we ask that your spirit move in their hearts, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who came this season to redeem us, who died for our sins, and will raise us up with him once again in that great day. God, we thank you for your majesty, your power, and your plan in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a Merry Christmas. Amen. Bye-bye.